Hello friends, I hope you're doing good. This is proper like weekend vibes. I've got a fleece and some pajama trousers on. Um, truly, a grand total of zero effort has gone into my appearance today. And that's all right. And this is such a weekend activity as well. And it's something that I've been meaning to get around to doing while I'm um, back home. Uh, and then I thought, might as well film it because I thought some of you might um, enjoy this as well. So I am going to be going through the archives. Basically, these are um, some books that I brought back from my flat in London when I was living in London. Obviously, the nature of moving out is that you just shove everything into boxes um, so you can get everything into the car to go. Um, and so there wasn't much time to kind of like organize things. So I just shoved all of my books into these boxes. We put them away into the garage as soon as we got home. And then I moved to Paris pretty soon after that, where I obviously couldn't take um, everything I own. So everything has sort of just been in storage in that time. And I'm currently, well, <laughs> so basically the situation is I came back home for Christmas and then France said, don't come back, please. <laughs> the COVID situation was starting to get pretty bad um, just as I was heading back to the UK. And so I haven't been able to return to Paris yet, um, <laughs> which has been a bit of a nightmare, not gonna lie. My life has sort of been just put on hold temporarily because my French class was meant to restart again on the 3rd of January. Obviously I couldn't get back for that, so I've had to delay it by four weeks. And so I'm hoping um, that I'm gonna be able to get back there for the 31st of January. I think they've just changed the rules so we can now get back to France. So that's one obstacle out of the way, that's good. Now I need to deal with the visa situation because um, my visa got cancelled. So I now need to get a new visa. And so pandemic problems are out of the way. Now we're on to Brexit problems, <laughs> the OG problem. Um, so anyway, that's irrelevant. But the reason that I'm still at home is because of that. I know that some of you have been quite confused about like, wait, I thought you moved to Paris, now you're back in the UK. Basically, that's why. But I've been trying to sort of plan out a little bit um, what I want to read in 2022. And a lot of these books, obviously, I bought because I was really excited to read them. For example, Memorial by Brian Washington is a book that I've been desperate to read, um, but I couldn't buy a copy of it because I knew I had one <laughs> at home in here. So the whole time I was in Paris, every time I'd go into a bookstore, I would see this book and be like, ah, I want to read you so badly, but I already have a copy of you. It's just in another country. Um, God, <laughs> that's such a first world problem. But anyway, that's the reason that I'm going through this, because I want to take some books out of here um, that I'm going to read. Is my phone ringing? Yes. Okay, so that's the first example of the books in here. So we're just going to have a sort through, basically. Um, how many layers deep is this? Oh, just one. Okay, that's good. That's going to make this a lot easier. What are you? Um, the Railway Accident by Edward Upwood. Um, I've read that, so that can stay in there. Obviously, a lot of these I have read, um, but equally, a lot of them I haven't. So, um, The Sympathizer is an example of one that I haven't, but I really want to get around to that. Um, I also had a lot of random books in my flat, like The Book Thief. I did for my EPQ in my A-levels, so like, <laughs> like it's got my post-it notes in, um, so I wrote an essay on this. Um, and for some reason, I decided to take that with me to my London flat. Ah, um, oh, The Girl with the Louding Voice. See, that is a book that I've been meaning to get around to for ages and ages, and all my friends who have read it have been like, Jack, you will love this. So these ones, I think, are all the books that were in my living room. Um, Brother by David Chariandi. Such a heartbreaking book. It's so just brilliant and powerful, and so emotionally charged as well. It's basically about, like, gang violence and sibling relationships and obviously I mean it's called brother nice one good review Jack but it is a tour de force wow um we are all birds of Uganda I bought this because it is published by Stormzy's uh imprint his murky books so um that I really want to get around to same with yoke I mean the big theme here is that I <laughs> know that I'm the problem I know that I have a problem and it's me. The problem is that I just buy every book that I think sounds good and the result is that I then end up with boxes of books that I haven't read and yet I continue to buy more and that needs to stop. Basically, I'm gonna put myself on like a bit of a book buying ban. <laughs> the Maidens, again, one that I really want to get round to. I actually was a bit put off by this because I was really excited about it and then I saw a few people sort of give it negative reviews and I did not realize it was written by the same author as The Silent Patient. Damn, okay, cool. That's like dark academia vibes. 
what was I saying? Yeah, basically I keep buying books, not reading them, and then buying more books and not reading those. So <laughs> I need to be a bit more mindful, I think, with what I'm buying and what I'm reading and a bit more intentional. So I actually have a list now. I mean, maybe this is really pathetic, but I have this like working list of my priority of the next book I want to read. Obviously, I think it all depends on like the mood you're in and what you need at that particular moment in time. So I'm flexible with it, but I try to have at least a rough list of like what my priorities are, like what I want to read first. Mostly that is because of the YouTube videos that I make and so I need to get around to certain books so that I can make videos on them. Like this book, for example, is one I've been absolutely desperate to read. It's Detransition Baby. And so I've planned a video for Pride Month where I've included this in the reading list so that I'm kind of trying to utilize the books that I already own. So I'll put that in my pile so I know where it is. Another Women's Prize nominee, Anthony Doshi's uh, Burnt Sugar, which I read for a video. Uh, we've got Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. The Other Black Girl. This is such a strange book because it's so genre defying like the last section of the book it goes oh you thought this book was one genre it isn't it's something completely different <laughs> i thought it was a really um interesting project look at this one this is probably i would say one of the most beautiful books i own it's sea of poppies by amitav gosh i loved his book um the hungry tides so i really really need to get around to that <gasps> look are you kidding me that is just Wow, how special is this edition? I I don't even know where I got this, but I really love it. It was definitely secondhand because it's laminated, so it probably came from a library. Um, I can take that off for sure. Um, but at the moment, it's protecting it, and I need to protect it with my life. Ah, uh, this is actually the book that inspired this whole um, project, Empire Land, because I've been really, really meaning to get around to this book, and I'm setting myself a challenge of reading at least one non-fiction book a month. If you're interested, I might actually publish that list so that if you guys want to read alongside me, you can. Um, because I've, I've kind of got all the books already, I don't think I'm going to be buying any more, but I'll probably be reviewing them and sharing my thoughts, um, and sharing my, um, the, the quotes and the sections that I thought were the most interesting or illuminating. So, um, if anyone's interested, I could share that list. It's gonna, gonna have this, the whole picture, um, the transgender issue, um, lots of really fascinating books, so if you're interested, that could be something we could do together. Ah, oh, Susie Dent, My Absolute Hero, Word Perfect is just a brilliant book for any language lover. Um, John Ronson's The Psychopath Test. But John Ronson is a really, really great um, non-fiction writer. Should I go through this pile? Yes, okay, that's everything. Ah, If We Were Villains, um, that's another book that I want to get around to. In fact, there's two Dark Academia books in there. Maybe I should do another Dark Academia video. See, people ask me, like, how do you come up with video concepts? It's mostly based on what I want to read, <laughs> and then I try and think of a fun video concept out of it, so who knows. Um, my Dark Academia video on my main channel is one of my favourite videos I've ever made, and a lot of people say it's like their comfort video, which just <laughs> fills my heart with absolute joy. So perhaps we'll do a part two um, with those two books, I'll put them together. That is box number one done, I think, and there's a little bit of space in here too, which means I can transfer some books into the box, and then hopefully there's going to be room under my bed because I feel bad for them being in my garage or where it's all cold and dusty. I know that is absolutely a ridiculous thing to say, but <laughs> I want to bring them in from the cold. Okay, let's do a little reshuffle and this one is now, it was at the bottom, it's now at the top. So we can go through them. This was my colourful bookcase, um, my colourful bookshelf, which you used to see in the background of my main channel videos. RIP, we miss her every day. Oh, speaking of colourful, if you want to get organised this 2022, head to inkoutsidethebox.co.uk because I made these daily planners. I swear by this every single day. In fact, I'll show you a page that I haven't filled in yet so you can see. Basically, every day you have the day broken up hour by hour, but each one has two lines, so you could break it up um, by every half an hour as well if you wanted to. It's undated, so you fill in the date yourself and the day, and that basically means that there's way less wastage. So, for example, like if you had a weekly planner um, and you don't fill in the Saturday and the Sunday, or like you just don't fill in anything on Wednesday, it doesn't matter in here because um, you won't have missed a day because you write the dates in yourself. Equally, you could write in the dates every day for the next two weeks and then fill them in as you go. Um, it's entirely your choice and that's what I really like about it. It's so customizable. I love this beautiful jacket design on the front. There's habit trackers at the back, room for notes, space to write in the books that you want to read that year, space to write in your long, your medium and your short-term goals, gift ideas. Like I've tried to really think of everything so you can have everything organized all in one place. Um, I think a few people were confused that this was the same as my academic planner. It's not. The dog is barking, <laughs> he's a fan. This is a separate product to my academic planner and it's designed for anyone who wants to organize their life in 2022. Okay, so the dog was barking because there was the biggest squirrel 
I've ever seen. Um, and he had like <laughs> a whole bread roll in his mouth. And I just want to know, where did he find that? Um, I'm impressed by the hustle, you know? <laughs> we used to have a squirrel that used to always come into our garden when I was younger and we called it Orange Juice. <laughs> that was um, apparently the most genius name I could come up with uh, when I was, I don't know, like seven. So hope Orange Juice the squirrel is out there doing good. Hope he's got a bread roll for himself too. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, if you are interested in the planners, inkoutsidethebox.co.uk and now on to the next box. For some reason, alongside my big books, I've got a really tiny one. This is Love in the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Cinnamon Gardens, so brilliant. I would love to write a thesis on this book because I am just obsessed with it. Um, Three Women, some Bukowski, more Shem Salvadori because I'm a fanboy. Oh, a Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway, the reason that I moved to Paris. Um, I actually want to take a picture of the quote at the front. Um, which it says, if you are lucky enough to have lived in Paris as a young man, then wherever you go for the rest of your life, it stays with you. For Paris is a movable feast. Um, and I wanted to put that on Instagram. <laughs> it really is as superficial as that. Um, but I have read the book and I loved it. Um, and I just wanted to share that because I've been doing these like photo dumps on Instagram. I love doing it because I basically use it to share um, my favourite quotes from books that I'm reading at the time and you guys seem to really enjoy them too and I think it gives you a bit of a taster of what the writing style of different books is like so um, yeah I think it's fun for all the family you know. So what do we have here? We Were Liars, Othello, Reef, Nocturnes and Natives, read all of those. These are my blue books here. Try not to pull all of that out because it is a bit of a fan. Ah, The Beekeeper of Aleppo. I loved this book. Ah, My Policeman. Um, so excited for the film. Do we reckon My Policeman film is going to come out in 2022? If so, I'm buzzing. It feels like it's the kind of time where the trailer is going to drop pretty soon. I can't wait for this. Emma Corrin and Harry Styles in one film is going to be pure perfection. Um, and, of course, it's all set in Brighton, where I grew up, so I'm very excited about that. Less is a book I really want to get around to. This pile is getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> ah, House on the Cerulean Sea. I'm actually working on, this is a spoiler, um, I'm working on a video where I am looking at all of the books that were recommended on Booktube. Because I did one on TikTok books. I'm now doing a sort of follow-up to that on, um, Booktuber recommended books. By the way, side note, The Wind Rush Betrayal. Brilliant. Anyways, so I have watched um, nearly a hundred booktuber videos of like the best books that they read in 2021 and I've been tallying all of the books that they recommend and so I'm going to read the top five I think. Um, House on the Cerulean Sea is really high up there at the moment. I think I'm on my 93rd booktuber and I want to get to 100 um, so I can base it on like 100 booktubers. Obviously a lot of the most recommended books on booktube I've already read so I'm kind of crossing those ones out. Um, I'm going to share the full results though so that you guys can see in the video because I think it'd be really cool. Um, and I've never seen anyone do something like that where they actually like kind of tallied what everyone was reading um, and recommending. Um, oh, here's a book that I've read and recommended. <laughs> My own book, Jack Edwards of the Universe. Um, we have a copy of this on every bookshelf. There, there's another one up there. <laughs> every bookshelf in the Edwards household has a copy of this book on it. And apparently every box does as well. Got this coming out my ears, wow. This is probably the book I've read the most times because going over that manuscript, I went over that so many times trying to get it absolutely perfect. We've got Small Pleasures, we've got Rodham. These were the books from my reading books that um, I saw people reading on the London Underground. Um, that video was such a silly concept. Um, but again, you guys seem to really love it, so I think I should do it again. When I do eventually get back to Paris, maybe I should do a Paris version. And I'd love to do it in all different countries, like in New York, in Tokyo. That could be really, really fun. Yeah, maybe I should make that a series on the channel. We have Anne of Green Gables. Ah, that I do need to put aside because I'm planning a video where I try out the cottagecore uh, aesthetic in a similar vein to my... Um, Dark Academia video. This has just turned to me just spoiling all my upcoming videos, but um, <laughs> I don't care. This second channel feels like where I just tell you everything. Uh, so in here I've also got all my books from my video on Lord and all my celebrity poetry, so actually these can all just go back in here. Oh, not this. Hello you. I kind of am just keeping this for the meme. I also enjoy that it still has the Poundland sticker on the front. I think that juxtaposed with the Jane Eyre corset <laughs> is uh, just quite 
funny to me. Oh, Ocean Vuong's poetry. He's got another poetry collection actually coming out in 2022 and I'm so buzzing for it. I would say it's probably one of my most anticipated books of the year. I hope this video makes sense. I feel like I've just been sort of talking <laughs> to myself. So to summarize, the books that I've taken out of these boxes, which I'm hopefully gonna read in 2022, are If We Were Villains, The Maidens, Anne of Green Gables, Less, Dominicana, Yoke, and We Are All Birds of Uganda, The Girl with the Louding Voice, and The Transition Baby, The Sympathizer, and The Memorial. Oh, and Empire Land. I don't know if I said this, but this is all about how imperialism has shaped modern Britain. So, um, yeah, part of the sort of education process for me, I think. And there we go. That's the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I'm actually gonna go put these on my wonky TBR trolley. <laughs> In the video, it's like the leaning tower of books. So anyway, hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, and I will catch you very soon. Bye-bye. Now I have to clear up this mess.